A trader named Hyder lived in a village. He had a grocery store. Being only one such store in the village, it had a good sale. He had two beautiful and talented daughters. Their names were Eliza and Sora. The sisters loved each other. They took great care of their father. The sisters cooked tasty meals for the father and helped the mother with household work. Eliza and Sora were inseparable. The two lived, played, gossiped, worked, ate, and slept together. One could not live without the other. They had no brother. Hyder often felt sadness for not having a son. But the lovely daughters were a great consolation to him. The girls were growing up fast. Hyder wanted them married off soon as the custom was. One day his wife said, Elder daughter Eliza has grown to marriageable age. We must look for a suitable groom for her. Hyder agreed, I know I want it to be a grand marriage. A trader's son will be good for her. The wife objected, No, a trader's son will remain busy like you. He will have little time for Eliza. I want a farmer's son. Maybe, you are right. I know a big landlord in a nearby village. But I don't know if he has a grown up unmarried son. Hyder requested the Mulvi of the village to go to that village to find out if the marriage was possible. The Malvi discovered that the landlord Gedana had indeed a son who was ripe for marriage. He was Gedana's only son. The Malvi at once proposed the marriage and praised the beauty and the qualities of Eliza. Shortly after, Eliza got married to Samar, the son of Gedana. Now Sara was lonely and very sad. She rarely laughed or talked. She would remain lost in the memories of Eliza. Meanwhile, Eliza was happy in her new home. The family had big lands which grew great harvests every season. Whenever Eliza came to meet her parents she was full of praise for her husband and father-in-law. On one visit, she advised her father, Papa. I think you must marry off Sara. That will cure her sadness due to loneliness. In her husband's home, she will meet new people and she will no more miss me. The father agreed with her. He spoke to his wife, talked to an aunt about Sara. She will find a groom for Sara. Your aunt is an outgoing person. She knows a lot of families. The wife informed Wright only yesterday she was mentioning about a suitable boy. I didn't show interest because I thought if Sara also goes our lives would become empty. Hyder remarked, that's selfish of you. If there is a good boy we must not miss the chance. The proposal was made and the marriage was fixed. Sara got married. Her husband had a big business of earthen pots. The family was in the pottery making business. All the villages around bought pots made by it. Sora was happy in her in-law's home. The new life was a pleasure for Sora. After a year Hyder invited both his daughters to visit him as he and his wife missed them. And it would be an opportunity for the sisters to meet each other. Eliza and Sora arrived almost at the same time. The sisters embraced each other and heartily giggled. The next day Hyder heard his daughters arguing with each other in the nearby room. It sounded like a quarrel. 
It surprised Hyder. What were the sisters who loved each other so much quarreling over? Hyder tried to listen. Eliza was saying, We are in trouble this year. There are signs of famine, a great draft. We are all praying for heavy rains. Sora protested, Why do you pray for heavy rain? A little rain can save your crops. Do you wish us ruined? Why should I wish your ruin? Eliza argued and added, I am just praying for rains. Heavy rains so heavy that the sun shouldn't appear for weeks. Sara complained, You are very bad, sis. You are praying for my disaster. I pray for every day to be a sunny day to dry up our clay pots. Even a day's rain means a loss for us. We have no pots to sell the next day. Hyder was surprised how the sisters were praying for opposite things to happen to suit their opposite interests. Hyder was sad about marrying off his daughters and the family having opposite needs and interests. One thing that brought happiness to one also proved misery for the other. Having opposite interests, the sisters no more loved each other.